What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a reaction to visited Japan, 18 culture shop tourists have in Japan. So I'm traveling to Japan soon. So I'm pretty much learning ahead of time because I don't want any problem when I get there and I need to know more about it. And plus I enjoy reading manga and uh, anime but that's not what Japanese is. It just one portion of the culture they have a lot more so i wanted to learn more so if you guys are interested in it with it come in this journey with me and let's have fun let's get started hey there fellow travelers mark here with walter's world today we're in kyoto japan outside the golden palace and today what we have for you are the 10 things that shock tours when they come here to japan I think and there's a 18. lot of fun things and there's, there's some actually quick helpful tourist information as well but we're in a really busy section right here and obviously not the best place to film but how could you not start a beautiful video about the shocking awesomeness of Japan without having the Golden Palace? Mm. Well, and now we're here inside the heart of Kyoto at another one of the beautiful temples throughout the city. And the first thing that's going to shock a tourist when they come here to Japan is the fact that you need an instruction manual to go to the bathroom here. Look, really? Everywhere else you go in the world, you know, you just sit down and go and flush and walk away. Oh, no, no, no. In Japan, it comes with a remote control on the side and two words that'll change your life. Heated seat. Oh my god. The heated <laughs> seats on the toilet here are fantastic. And you'll sit down and think, oh, this is so comfy. And you're going to need that because you're going to have to figure out is which button do I push to make it flush or make it do whatever these other buttons are. Oh. Look, the buttons that are on there, one is a bidet button. So this little thing comes out and shoots water <clears throat> in your bum or on your bum to clean you off. Um, <laughs> another little shock would be if you start with high pressure, you'll get a big shock at first. So start with this, this low pressure and move your way up, okay? There's another button for, for women, like the frontal cleaning. Okay. Um, there's another button that'll be for a blow dryer to blow dry your butt. So it's a really? hands toilet experience. Also, you don't want to have people hear you going to the bathroom. Don't worry, there could be a privacy setting on there that plays music or makes sounds to kind of hide those things. But the thing is, there's also a stop button because if you want the music to stop or the water pressure to stop, you know, cleaning you off, you need to push that button, okay? But it is okay. I need to learn that you menu, places, like, have the translations. So just know the stop button is still that square, but the bidet one, it looks like a butt, okay? It looks like a water fountain with butt, like, with going out like this. That'll help you out that way, okay? Oh, wow. Um, you can flush the toilet paper when you are here, so that's fine, but it is. It's kind of one of those things when you look at the toilets you're going what do i do especially when you see one of the toilets that actually has a sink on top of it so you wash your hands and that water goes down and fills up the tank for the next flush so it is quite efficient wait okay? now the second thing sorry question understand the reason how this work but with the bidet does that use that water that you use to wash your hand to wash your you know what does that use the same water that I wouldn't prefer that because if I'm washing my dirty hand and that water is going there and some other people wash their dirty hand and the water go in there and then that water is going to use to, to clean my behind I don't want to be affected no way but if you know the answer put in the comment below this is a very much a cash based society I know that's it is I know. for a foreigner to actually get cash when you are here because not all the banks will take foreign debit cards to get cash out so you might ask yourself well Mark then how am I going to pay for stuff well you can pay credit card lots of places they accept most most credit cards it's no big deal but getting cash your options are one when you get into the airport when you fly in get cash then because those ATMs will take foreign cards if you go to the post office those atms there will help you out but the most convenient <laughs> way to get money is actually the convenience stores yes yeah, so a lawson's or a 7-eleven those atms they will take foreign cards and it is a lifesaver because you need to have cash when you're here do okay? i pay so for that. that now the next thing is going to shock you when you come here dealing with those does that have a feed because i don't know maybe it does have a feed but if it doesn't, that would be cool. If it does, that would be bad. Convenience stores, since we're already talking about is how convenient the convenience stores really are. If you yeah. talk to people, they're like, wait, I always it's want a to try. Store. It's 7 Eleven, it's soda and beer and some candy. What else could there be? Well, here in Japan, the convenience stores work like many supermarkets. So it's kind of similar like to shaving, Tesco if here. You need stuff for your uh, for your uh, for your phone. If you want to get like night like the sushi we had for breakfast the other day that we got from Lawson's, one of the convenience stores, was better than any sushi I've had in the U.S. in a few years. Okay, so it's pretty good. Obviously, stuff. You know, bakery stuff, hot drinks, cold drinks, hot buns, all kinds of stuff. It really is a great experience, and for a tourist. That's probably going to be your go-to place to get breakfast, okay? And usually every two or three blocks away. 
thing. Now, the next thing that's going to shock you, if you can't make it the two or three blocks to get to your convenience stores, is the vending machines here in Japan. Look, oh, yeah, vending that's machines everywhere. everywhere. And yes, they sell hot and cold drinks, no big deal, in the same thing. But also, they might sell you school supplies or toys or other things like shirts or other stuff you might want to have here and the video why is it all sorry i know i'm hearing when he's saying but what he says is not sweet it's water pokari sweet but it's actually water huh why or toys or other things like shirts or other stuff you might want to have here and the vending machines are all over so it's really cool and also you can pay with coins or sometimes they'll take your your metro card you can pay with that there's all kinds of different ways an app and the vending machines are all over so definitely use that to your advantage but Ooh, the thing is you don't want to just nice. eat from a vending machine or a convenience store you want to go to a restaurant and eat and that's why the next thing that's going to shock you when you come here is outside the restaurants the plasticized food Look, my kids, when they were little, they loved the kitchen we had for them. They'd play with the different foods there and stuff like oh, that. Japan where's has that? Well. The plastic food display outside the restaurant. A um, whole nother level. Because you'll be outside of a restaurant and almost every dish will be out there in plastic form. Actually, pretty realistic plastic form. Yeah. To look at, you're like, what is going on here? And you can actually buy them as souvenirs, okay? We picked up a few for some friends. And you have this plasticized food in front of so many restaurants, which is actually oh, helpful that for tourists nice. because the menus a lot of times don't have English or don't have much explanation or don't have pictures. Oh, so you so might cute. actually go outside and go, I want this, okay? And that leads us into our next shock. And that is, you may not have any clue what the hell you're eating or any idea how to eat it. And that's okay because the food here is fantastic. But you'll be shocked going, what, what do I do here? Why is there a raw egg here? What do I, how do I cook this? Look, if you don't know how to eat it, it's okay. Ask the waiter or waitress, like, excuse me, could you, you know, and, and do your signals, like, how do I eat this? And they'll be glad to show you. <laughs> I will be doing with this signal, you can imagine. With it. And the thing is, is you might be worried, well, if it's a raw egg or if it's something else, or how am I, I'm not sure how I'm going to eat, what if I'm going to get sick? Look. <laughs> The next thing that's going to shock you about coming to Japan is how clean it is here. The streets, the public transportation, the homes, the restaurants, the shops. Everywhere you go, you'll be surprised how clean it is here. And that cleanliness goes into Ooh. the restaurants as well. So you're probably not going to be getting any food poison when you are here. So you don't need to worry about that. Oh, I want to do that. Really, you're like, wait, 35 million people in Tokyo, and, and I can't even get me to keep my room as clean as the streets of Tokyo, okay? It's crazy like that, all right? I mean... This is dirty because there's leaves down and that's it. The Japanese are so proud of their country. They do a great job of keeping it clean that it's not just the streets. It's also the food and the quality of the food and stuff like that. You'll be in shock how clean it is where you're like, wow, I don't have to worry about anything here. No, not really. It is really cool. Now, go with that clean side of it. There's also the quiet I'll question side. that when I get there. You'll be shocked how quiet it is here in Japan. Quiet? This in certain area, I'm it's in Kyoto, quiet. It's a million and a half people, one of the biggest tourist spots in the entire country, and it's quiet. You can go through Tokyo with 35 million people and oh, find areas where cute. it's quiet. You're like, how is it so quiet? What's going on here? Look, the people here are rather quiet in general, but the thing is, it's not just the people. It's also the cars and other things. It's a very quiet environment here, and you're just kind of shocked just how quiet it is. Sometimes it's almost wow. disturbingly quiet how quiet it is. But the thing is, you don't have to worry about that silence, because the next thing that shocks tourists when they come here is how safe Japan is. It is I one know. of the safest countries in the world I always to visit. That Japanese and for me, the best part about this trip is I Except got Except for the pickpocket and the thief and all that any kind of safety issues when I came here. And that's what's so nice. You can lose your wallet they're going to turn your wallet into your hotel with all the cash in and say sorry nope. it took us so long to get there that's not true <laughs> that's definitely not true you may depend on who end up picking up for you if it was a nice guy you will receive that wallet back if it's not you're not going to receive that wallet back so don't assume that it is safe just because Japan is a safe country, but no. That is how safe it is here. And that's one of the things that really shocks tourists is when you travel around, you're always worried, where do I put my wallet? Where do I have my things? Oh, you his kids are so that, really, cute. In Japan. Now, obviously, when you're in busy spots, you might want to take care, of course. But in general, it's insanely safe when you come here, which makes it awesome for a tourist. But the thing is, it might make a great place for you to come, but there's one thing you might be shocked that you might not like when you come here, and that's how tight and how small everything is. Look, if you're a huskier fellow like myself, you might have some issues here in Japan. Now, not a lot, but in general, it's a very tight quarters kind of place. 
hotels, they're going to be small. Bathrooms are going to be small. Showers are going to be small. Apartments are going to be small. Because there's a lot of people in these small islands. And you're going to be mm. uh, kind of feeling a little claustrophobic. And that does shock some tourists when they're like, I'm on the metro during rush hour in, in Tokyo, and it's all like this. Yes. And when you're waiting in line with 600 people in front of you, oh, and you take do, the next metro or, side. or something like that, that's just the way it is. And it can be a little over... I guess overwhelming for some tourists, so just be ready for the small space and kind of the claustrophobic that? nature with all these people here. That does shock people, but it is part of the great thing. And what's cool with all these people and all these things, it may seem like, oh, that's gonna be a long line, but they're super efficient when you're here, so the lines do go actually pretty quickly. And there are people that do help you stay on the right side of the road and stay on the right side of the walkways and <laughs> stuff like that, and help you get in and out of the metros and the trains and the buses, so that really helps. And the thing is, those tight spaces and very small living quarters might kind of explain the love hotels you'll see around town. Yes, if you're traveling and you're looking for an interesting night alone with your special someone, well, there's love hotels here you can go to. Not a normal hotel. It's kind of like those hourly rate places, but you can get it with a theme, okay? <laughs> so just mm -hmm. FYI for that one. Now, there are some other smaller shocks you will see here. Is one, you'll see all these signs saying no smoking on the streets. Yes, you can get fined for smoking on the streets here. Lucky also, for me, I don't smoke. Also, you to know that it's not cool to eat while you're walking. I'm so aware of that. Stop, sit down and eat that way. Don't walk and eat or walk and drink. Totally not cool. Another shock that you might not like or you might seem strange is how um, uncool and unpolite or impolite it is to sneeze or blow your nose in public. We were at the zoo in Tokyo and this girl was next to us and her face goes, oh, and you could tell she was about to sneeze and she covered her nose and ran out of the zoo so she didn't sneeze in front of her friends, okay? So just Seriously? Have that one. Another thing that I'm might sorry, you but that one, if it come, it come. I bill, cannot stop it myself. Take your money. Look, in Japan, you don't pay your waiter. You don't tip your waiter either. What you do is when you're done eating, you take your bill up to the cashier that's at the door when you're walking out, and you pay there. So don't oh. be shocked. They don't take your money. They just point up to the front. You go up there and pay there, okay? Oh, now, another thing might shock you is you look on your tourist map, and you're looking for temples like this to go see, and you know there's different signs. You know, the cross to the church and the municipal building, and then you'll see a swastika. And my son, my, my 11-year-old son, he saw this. He goes, uh, Dad, why is there a Nazi symbol here? Look, it's not a Nazi symbol. It's a good luck charm. It's a, it's a sign of hope and good luck and good fortune. And people get kind of shocked when they see that. And look, it's not Nazi stuff. That's just a symbol they have here, okay? And kind of going okay. along with those shocks, and you see, because you look on your map, you see so many of them, is the how many temples there are here. And you might actually get temple burnout in some way. Is because all throughout the country, you have beautiful temples like this. I went to go this to most of them. Temple. Right. Temple. This isn't one of the fancy 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites uh, here, in, here in Kyoto. I'm filming here because, look, there's no tourists around. Because it's just another random temple. And you have these fantastic temples all throughout the country. Palaces and fortresses and stuff like that. They're just amazing to see. So make sure you take the time mm -hmm. to go and explore them. And believe me, there might be a small one near your hotel or big ones outside of towns or in the mountains. Take the time to go explore. I'm going Talking to see them. Mountains, the next thing that shocks people when they come here is the majestic beauty of the landscape in Japan. Yes, when you take that train from Tokyo to Kyoto, you'll turn and see Mount Fuji. And you're like, oh my God, it's Mount Fuji. It's just like in the pictures. Yes, it is so cool to see that. But it's not just Mount Fuji. It's walking through the bamboo forest, seeing the leaves nice. change, or hearing the fall, watching the leaves change. It's gorgeous. Or coming in the springtime when the cherry blossoms are blooming. Oh my God, it is just gorgeous. Oh my Japan God, that looks so The history so and the culture and the world culture and amazing artwork but also it has the natural beauty and natural artwork that you're going to see and these two things combined makes it a fantastic place for tourists to go another thing that might shock you when you come here is when you go to the onsen or the spas when you come here i want now, to first try thing that might shock you is, yes you have to go all natural naked when you go into those now there's no <laughs> second all natural thing, okay but what might shock you is they give you two towels a big towel and a little towel and you think oh i'll take the big towel in when i go in to, to you know um, to myself my privacy and stuff like that is it oh, tiny no, 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 one that one's for later you take the little towel with you you think oh well i guess i'll just hold it here and, and you know, cover my beds oh no no that's all natural as well that towel is actually for your head okay so don't be shocked about being naked with your japanese friends because it's just another way you're gonna have a good time with them when you are here and mm -hmm. that leads us into the last thing you're gonna love and that's mm -hmm. japanese people they're friendly they're helpful mm -hmm. they're kind They'll do what they can to help you and show you the right way if they don't speak English. And that's one of the things. You'll be shocked how little English is actually spoken here in Japan. How few English speakers are out there, even in tourist spots. But the people will work with you to help. And that's what's cool about those plasticized foods. Because now 
now you can point and say, no, English doesn't matter. I can point at what I want. And that's really a fun thing. But honestly, the Japanese people have been so wonderful us, showing us around, telling us where to go, or at least pointing us in the right direction, all kinds of stuff. That really makes you really fall in, fall in love with Japan when you do come here. I do hope you will come. It is an amazing country from the temples, the mountainside, to the food, which is fantastic. Oh, my goodness. And all these shocks, they're all fun times and fun stuff. I hope you enjoy Japan when you do come here. Bye, guys. So this is the end of that video. So if you guys want to see the original video to this video, I'll put a link down in the description. Let's talk about what I think about it. Most of the things that he said, I already knew about it. The reason why I know about so much about Japan already is because I am a massive fan of manga and anime. And most of the story is based on Japan itself, so the country. So I seen things in there, already think about it in there, so that's what I know about it. And sometimes I just want to see them to like double check if what I read is actually correct or not. So that's actually good. But I did have some question in there like the big day. Like uh, that water they used to wash their hands, the same water they used to clean. If you guys don't answer to that, I'll put it in the comment down below. And also about the ocean. If you guys have a place that you think that's a good ocean, put it in the comment down below because I'm planning to go to Japan in October. So it's, I know it's a long way, but I want to get prepared and get ready for it when it comes so if you have information about a place you want me to see or you think I would love to see leave that as well in the comment down below I will check them and then I'll make my list around them and uh, this was a good video and I have a wonderful experience learning about it I hope you guys did and I'll see you guys on the next video bye